evening and welcome to the online darts fallout bar show as we bring to an end night 11 of the 2024 bet mgm premier league of darts where we were tonight the traveling circus of the pdc made its way to the midlands to birmingham i am joined tonight by a man who is swift becoming a bit of a regular on the fallout bar which is quite a lovely thing carolyn evans how are you my friend i'm very well good Dan. yeah thank you nice to be back here again how are you I'm very well, mate. I'm very well indeed. It's been a it's been a pleasant week. We've had quite a bit of of, of darts to enjoy over the over the last week or so. We've got a European tour coming up over the next few days. So it in it, it's it's quite a nice week on Planet Darts. We're having fun. It it was I mean, we had a very quick chat just before we got going where we sort of agreed that it was a bit of a of a of a lacklustre night in the Premier League. Now we are in that very sort of strange middle spell and and the league doesn't the league hasn't reached an exciting point yet in that we, we've got some very very clear leaders at the top we've got some people really struggling at the bottom and the middle we haven't quite reached the excitement bit towards the end where every game matters so a little bit lackluster but we'll cover that through the course of the evening we've already got some folks in the chat room. Good evening to Malachi. Malachi's in. Joe is in, as is Brad as well. I know we've got a few more watching, I can see. Please, by all means, folks, if you are watching, get involved in the chat room. You do. It's a little bit of a trick that we have. Have to subscribe to the channel in order to chat in the chat room. But we will get you involved at every opportunity to discuss tonight's action and to have a little look at what might be happening next week, where the games might have a little bit more importance as things start to tighten up, certainly for that fourth spot. Um, I think, I suppose, we'll do what we normally do. Now, sometimes on this show, we like to talk about predictions. Now, Carolyn has been uh, fairly honest with me in his chat in that he hasn't had the best of evenings with his predictions. But regardless of how his evening's gone, it's gone better than mine because I am the fool of the group who wrote out his predictions and didn't click send and didn't put them into the group. So I'm not going to dwell on predictions this evening and we'll just talk through the night's action. And I suppose the, the first game, whilst it wasn't a, a blockbuster event and it, and it wasn't the, you know, the best standard of darts we've, we've, we've seen, it was a bit of a strange game, this opening game between, between Humphreys and Peter Wright, because for, for a large spell, I mean... Let's be honest, there weren't many people who would have picked Peter Wright in this game at all. I think lots of people thought it would have been a, a Luke Humphreys pushing against an open door. But for a large spell, Peter Wright really made a game of it, didn't he? Yeah, and after Humphreys' performance last week in the Premier League, when he found himself 4-1 down tonight, I guess we have to start thinking maybe he had the bubble burst. But in true Peter Wright... Premier League campaign of 2024, um, he managed to blow a blow a four-one lead, and um, yeah, I guess it, it sort of sums up his campaign really, but also shows that whilst Humphreys might have been in a blip, he soon bounced out of it and and, and got over the line, which again was is the important thing for him just to keep picking up points. Yeah, definitely. I think you've summed it up really well. The, the there was just moments in that game. I mean, the one thirty on the ball to go four-one up. I mean, it looked it looked almost impossible for Peter Wright to lose that game. Um, on throw as well, you know, with some breaks to the good. And he was playing very well. I mean, certainly at that time, he, he was averaging very well. His doubles looked very good. And then it just, it, it disappeared a little bit. Now, I do think that whilst we did see Luke Humphreys rattle off five on the spin, Peter was still in that game. He just didn't quite get the job done, did he? Um, we did. We saw. I mean, we saw seven. Was it seven? Did we see seven perfect darts from Humphreys? Yes, I think it was seven, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, which I think was the was that the same leg that Peter hit the one thirty. So we no, we did. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a dull game. It wasn't boring. But but I think you're right. It, it it did it did sum up a little bit Peter Wright's campaign. 
Um, and, and those moments just came to seem to keep coming and going for him, don't they? Where we think, here we go, and then it just it just disappears. And and in the end, the game very much went, I think, the way that a lot of the, the way that a lot of people would have predicted it with a with a score line to boot. Now well, I mean, we'll rattle through the, the first round, but moving on to the to the next game in the in the second round, this again was a bit of a strange one because it. I think they both underwhelmed a little bit, and we'll probably. I'm going to use the word underwhelming. I, I fear um, a little bit throughout the course of the evening, but it, it was it was a bit underwhelming from from both players. Um, Sub ton averages, which we're not used to seeing from from both players in the Premier League. However, do you think? Rob Cross maybe with a with a with a ninety nine average and, and and just a shave under fifty percent on his on his doubles will be disappointed not to get over the line against Luke here. Definitely, and especially sort of um, doing that game at that, I think it was two points. Uh, was it three one and five three up and looking in control really? And from from those positions and especially five three, you don't expect Cross to lose three on the bounce. Um, yes. Um, no, it wasn't five three. Was he? It was five four. He went up, and then he lost his. He lost his um, five four up, and then he lost his throw in the tenth leg. And yeah. I, I, that's sort of very unlike Rob Cross. And um, I was surprised that their averages were, were where they were because it sort of felt like they both were playing well, but not to the standard we expect of them. And they seem, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it felt like there was a bit of nerves in the game. And I don't know if that was just what I was sort of thinking, maybe because it just didn't reach the fireworks well, it, that I was hoping for, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, and I just used a word in the in the in the chat room, and, and I think he's used it to sum up the evening, but I think it it, it perfectly sums up this game in, in, in it being a, a bit gritty. Um, you know, the, and, and there was there was a moment in this game where, where Luke Luke hit a a one eight. I forget which leg it was and at which stage of the game. But Luke hit a one eighty um, to leave himself twenty four, and and Rob Cross came to the hockey and and took out one hundred and two, and and they are generally the games when that sort of thing happens that that Rob Cross comes through. You know when is when he is under pressure from his opponent. His opponent's on a on a single dart finish, and he comes and he takes out a a, a big you know ton plus checkout. In that short format, those gritty, grinding, scrappy games, we often see Rob Cross come through them. And he just managed to find a way not to win in, in this one. Um, but I, I don't think Rob Cross will be too disheartened. It wasn't a stinky performance by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and I think he's, you know, let's be honest, he's still very, very much in the picture of this, of this, you know, the, the bigger, the bigger scheme of the Premier League. Um, I think it was just, just a chance for him to get one over on Luke Littler, really. And the way Littler's playing, not many players can say that they've beaten Luke Littler. So I think that's probably what will be the disappointing factor, is the fact 5-4, uh, dart in hand, he's not been able to get the job done. Without a doubt. And speaking of not being able to get the job done, um, your compatriot, Mr Price, in this next one... Um, now again, the averages genuinely surprised me when I because I, I I wasn't watching, sort of analysing. I take a couple of notes here and there, and I, but I wasn't tracking averages. And it's only when I compile things at the end, you know, afterwards, and I know we have to sit and talk about it. I looked at the averages and I went, well, one hundred and four and a half plays one hundred and three and a half. That that make it doesn't bear any resemblance to the game that I think I watched earlier on. Um, it seems a really strange strange numerical fact um but i think i mean certainly the well the majority of this game certainly the first four legs five you know, would would Gerwin price could not hit his doubles no. and when you're playing someone that's averaging within a point of view and they're averaging 60% on their doubles that's going to cost you if you if you're going to start to move around the pot and miss your favorites if you're going to miss when Ger, when Gerwin price is missing tops and tens He's not going to win a match, but we did see a glimmer, didn't we? Yes, yeah, and I think from from four nil down to to sort of get it back to four three, that you'd think then there'd be a momentum switch, but Smith manages to get over the line. But I, I, it must be a concern for Price now because so many times 
this year, we've seen him miss tops and tens on a regular basis. As in, there was a time, if Price left tops, you'd bank on him going out in, in two darts, three at, three at worst case scenario. But now, tonight, as in, I think he was on sort of 40% doubles, as in, to still average 103 with those sort of double stats is insane. And if if he could find a double, he'd, he'd blitz through these fields. But something's just not quite clicking um, on the on the outer ring, and and it's cost him a place um, in in the Premier League playoffs, and it'll it'll cost him more unless he sort of um, gets it sorted sooner rather than later. Yeah, I mean, there's a. You know, there's a very famous Dutchman that we'll come to very shortly who uses the phrase a lot is about doing the right things at the right time. Now, I feel at the minute, Gerwin Price is he's almost doing the right things at the wrong time. He, he, he seems to find he seems to find his scoring boots and find his doubling on throw, and and he loses it. He loses his doubling when he gets the opportunity to break, and it's and it, and it is it's just almost like the the that timing of the, the, the universe of going price the, the right things at the wrong time isn't uh, isn't all coming together is it? it it's a it's it's just not clicking for him at the minute and and you're right i think it's got to be a concern um you know we know he's come I, up I think, against some... go ahead mate not just gonna say because I, I think you summed up some did it perfectly there and in the fourth leg tonight i think he was on 181 after six I managed to lose the leg, as in not on any previous year in his professional career would Gerwin Price lose a leg of that when he's left one eight one after six. And yeah, it's as as a fellow Welshman, I do I do I do feel for him because um I often find myself missing a shedler of darts at a double. I'm not on one eight one after six. <laughs> I, I certainly miss the darts at the double. And then, so moving on, we'll wrap up the um, the the first round tonight with it with it, with it, another game that you know again it, this did have its moments and it, and it we did see a, a a performance from Michael Van Gerwen that we you know is closer to what we get closer to the level that we're used to seeing from at the moment. It certainly wasn't vintage Michael Van Gerwen, but um, if I'm completely honest, I very much lack notes and content and insight into this game because it I mean it, it was just a game of darts that happened <laughs> it wasn't you know the one five two was lovely um you know that that was very that was very nice it was nice to see that from from Michael um and, and as a you know and it did swing you know it did swing a, a, a little bit um obviously Nathan getting the, the four two lead and and then losing four on the spin and and, and you know losing two breaks with throw to, to lose the match but but it seemed to all happen without a great deal of excitement. You know, from that four two, we only saw one one eighty thrown between the two players for the rest of the game. Um, you know, the, the averages were were average. Um, it was just a, a game of darts that happened, wasn't it? Really? Yeah, and it's a shame because obviously this was dubbed pre pre start of the evening as the as the big match the one could Michael slip out the top four could Nathan cement his place in the top four and from four two to Aspinall you're thinking oh right okay this could sort of kick off but it just sort of filtered out into a six four win for Michael and everything's okay in Michael Van Gogh in world again it, it was just yeah as you say it just didn't yeah, have I'm not sure how, and I, and I think they'd all tell you different, and they'd probably tell you they don't. And I'm not sure how close Michael's eye was on the league going into tonight, but he, he probably knew that Michael Smith was sat right underneath him, and and watching Michael Smith go out and win and pick a point, you know, pick you know pick up points just before he goes to the stage could have been a little bit of a fire lit into into Michael Van Gogh, you know, knowing that he has got somebody breathing down his neck, and now that. You know, we'll come to the league a little bit later on, but now, now Michael Smith's breathing down the neck of Nathan Aspinall. That that's been a little bit of a sh that, that's the the real shuffle in the in the league today. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't got too much else to say on that one. It just sort of went on and, and, and happened. Um, yeah. But I'm very excited, very excited indeed, to come to what was undoubtedly both the game and the performance of of the night. When 
in the first semi-final, we, we got to... And, and this is a game, let's be honest, that we're becoming very used to seeing. Um, we've seen this game quite, quite a lot over the last four or five months. But it's also a result that we're becoming very used to seeing in this game, all but the one occasion, as Luke Littler averaged 107 in a monstrous performance um, against the world champion and world number one, Luke Humphreys. And what a performance this was from the young 17-year-old. Oh, yeah, once again, he's just sort of proving that not only does he deserve to be um, sitting at the top table, but sort of at the top of the top table. And I guess if you ask Luke Humphreys, he'd still take the World Championship final win. But this is becoming a habit of Luke Littler winning last leg deciders against the world champion and the world number one. And the kid is 17. He has got the temperament of a 50-year veteran dart player. To have the... um, I don't want to swear, but to have the bottle, let's say, for oh, a... feel free. <laughs> but but Bollocks, no, I'll do it for you. <laughs> yeah, but to have to have the, the the balls to just do it week after week, and just, nothing seems to phase him. And again, 107 average. It's, the the this kid is a, well, a young adult. He's not a kid. He's he's a he's a he's a grown man. As in, well, a young adult. Um, he's just going to smash all the ceilings and. He's going to take Das to places Das never knew we could go, and um, and it's just great entertainment as well. Because obviously, who doesn't love a last leg decider between the world number one and the biggest thing, biggest talking point in Das at the moment? Well, I mean, the last leg, the, the the fact that we got a last leg decider, I think, is is fascinating as well. Because obviously, like Luke Humphreys came out, you know, he came out quite well in that, in that second set, um, found that max, found that break of throw. Um, got himself 2-0 up. And then, obviously, from that point onwards, we saw the Luke Littler show. Um, and, and, you know, from, from 2-0 down to 5-2 up, it, it, it did feel a little bit like Luke Humphreys was getting a bit of a taste of his own medicine because how many times have we seen him in the last 12 months do that to somebody, just turn up and, and somebody to literally sit there and think, well, I could throw anything here and I'll just lose this game. What can I do? He's just going to keep doing these miraculous things. Um, but then somehow, he, he just turned the screw a little bit and kept hold of the coattails. And he 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 took that bro- that well, he took a, two breaks of throw to level it up at five all. But then, obviously, the way the, the, the format of the game had gone, Luke Humphreys was then throwing for the match. And, and at that point, I thought, oh, he'll win, won't he? Like because he's he's the world number one, he's the world champion, and and the fact that he's got it back from from five two down to to throwing for the match, but then game would just see you know that temperament, and 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 you mentioned about Luke Littler's temperament. Like we did see a bit of a wobble in the first game yeah. against Rob Cross. You know we saw his we saw him get a little bit frustrated. We saw his head go a little bit. He he, he was certainly not in the place he should have been for at least one leg, where, where he was he was just a little bit all over the place, and he did manage to get it back. But then to to go off stage and to come back and, and, and to show Compo, like where in that final deciding leg, he found that 180, which he needed, you know, that, that to, to break the throw, found the 180, come back for the double 14. Um, and it was just, it was, a, it was a very beautiful thing to watch. And there is, there is very little in, in, you know, that you could ask for really in, in terms of watching darts, other than a, a game like that. It was, it was by streets the, the most entertaining game of the night, and, and a brilliant semi final. Um, but <laughs> from brilliant semi finals, and again, just. And I know, you know, it's a bit gritty. And maybe I think sometimes that we are a little bit spoiled. Um, And and that we sort of, you know, the Premier League's a long old slog. And, it it, you know, you're always going to get a bit of one ear and there. But again, I mentioned earlier, this was just like it was a darts match that happened. And, and, you know, this was just, I mean, the first, well, what were we up? The first seven... Games of this were holds of throw. Um, I think it took to the eighth leg before we got a break. But again, just because 
I mean, we mentioned it, doing the right things at the right time. Um, you know, Michael Van Gerwen took that break of throw now, now to throw for them. And he then had the break of throw to throw for the match. And I thought, oh, doing the right things at the right time. And I thought, well, are we are we, we going to see, is this game all of a sudden going to spring to life and, and we're going to see some action? And and no, it sort of went out with a bit of a whimper in the end, didn't it? It, was, it wasn't the best. No, from a Premier League semi-final to a non-league semi-final. It was just, <laughs> um, it was, a well, yeah, yeah. To, to think sort of, of the, well, bonkers amount of titles Michael Smith and Michael Van Gerwen have got between them. I thought what they offered on a plate for us tonight was, was, was disappointing. And maybe this is now, we expect the Premier League to be a certain standard. We, we, we expect the top, or the best eight players in the world at the time to be hitting ridiculous averages. And and it just proves that they're human. And yeah, I think, as you say, when we got that eighth break, uh, eight leg break, we thought, oh, okay, Michael Van Gerwen will do a special, he'll pull his socks up, but he'll win this leg. And then Bish Bash Bosch is in the final. He then lost the throw when you thought, wow, okay, um, this slog is going to have to go on for a bit longer. But luckily, um, Van Gerwen managed to break again to, to to end it without a last leg decider. But um, after the first semi final, it was just a bit of a an anticlimactic second semi final, I guess. It was, and it and again we'll, we'll come to the league a little bit in a, in a minute. But Michael Smith, I think he's had a really Michael Smith has gone without a shadow of a doubt, completely under the radar. Now, uh, granted, he won. Night number one, you know, so, so he, he he got out of the blocks quickly. Since then, um, you know, we haven't seen we whilst we you know we've seen him move through the rounds a couple of times, but we haven't seen box office performances. But he has done well, he's picked up enough points, he's moved himself through those first rounds enough ta- five times in he's come through, you know, in, into a quarter or a semi. Um and it's, it's put him a point outside of the playoffs with six weeks to go. It, it, it's very, very achievable for Michael Smith to be in, in the last four. But, you know, just anecdotally, based on what we've seen from him, the level of performance that we've seen, it almost seems a bit strange that Michael, you know, that he would be in the top four. And it maybe speaks volumes of, of that, you know, it's very much a six-man competition. Um Rob Cross, we've seen slip a little bit further out of that competition today. Um, that is now a, a bit of an uphill battle for him that we'll, that we'll come to. Um, but yeah, a really interesting, I think, to, to follow Michael Smith over the next few weeks. Now, we better wrap up night 11 of Birmingham just in, in going through this. And I, I oh, underwear. Right. I was a bit excited about this because. Because I, I thought, well, we'd seen that performance from Luke Littler in the semis, and I thought, oh, this is going to be amazing. And then we've seen Michael Van Gerwen, like knowing that he needs to win to get to 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 the last four, and he, he wants to cement his place in fires, and he's missed the Premier League. And I was really excited, and I was thinking, God, I'm going to run out of superlatives when we sit on the, on the live lounge and we talk about this game. And it almost felt more underwhelming than anything else tonight, didn't it? It's amazing to think that Van Gerwen won the semi-final with a 93 average and the final with a 90 average against Luke Littler, who on the big stage doesn't know how to average less than 100. What the hell happened in this final? It just, yeah, it, it's almost exciting to talk about how underwhelming it was because I think everybody well, was like expecting big things and it just never happened. Between between the semi final and the final, Littler lost nineteen points off his average. <laughs> now, I mean. It, if I lost 19 points off my average, I'd be I'd be on a minus, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, thankfully, he's good enough where he can he can lose 19 points off his average and he can still still pick up. Um, now, and again, so Jeff again, Jeff's been uh, 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 he's put some of my favourite comments in the chat room this is for, for some time because I, I one of the things I wanted to bring up was how often in the history 
of Michael Van Gerwen's career has he been correctly likened on commentary to James Wade? <laughs> I'll go with an answer somewhere less than two. <laughs> but yes, Michael Van Wade this evening, who who like let's be honest, with a you know, with a sort of you know, six out of seventeen on the doubles, 125 checkout, big combination checkout where it was needed, 90 average. He has waded his way through the final, hasn't he? Exactly. And um if if it works, it works, and clearly it did tonight. But yeah, it's it's strange to think of Michael Van Gerwen as somebody who just gets the job done and not somebody who gets the job done with cherries on top and fireworks and frills and ribbons and everything. But is this a new business like Michael Van Gerwen? Just get the, get me in the top four and then when we hit the playoffs, I'll uh, I'll sort of uh, let the sh- uh, shackles off. I don't know. But um, yeah, it was just... Oh. The final sort of yeah. summed up the night, really. It just never never felt like it got going. It was something quite not there. No, a bit of a strange one. But the Green Machine was victorious on night eleven and he picked up the big um he picked up the big it's five points for a win, isn't it? Now that's what you get. Yeah. Um now I do not have the technological capabilities to show the um <laughs> the, the league table on the screen for the stream but i will just have a little chat through it and i'll let everybody know what's going on and what's happening so we do see luke littler still sat at the top of the table with a points total of 26 now traditionally we do know that that would be enough whilst i don't think we yet have the mathematical cue next to his name do we but it would take something remarkably strange happening over the next few nights for Luke Littler not to be there, as would Luke Humphreys, who sits behind him in second position on 24 points. We've got Michael Van Gerwen in third on 22. You've got to expect, I think, that we are now playing for one place within that finals night playoff on the 23rd of May. And the prime position player at the minute for that is Nathan Aspinall, who's in fourth with 18 points. Michael Smith just one behind him, though, on 17. Rob Cross finds himself falling even further back now on just 11 points. Gerwin Price on 10 and Peter Wright on a lowly sum of four points. Do we think, Gerwin, that we are now... Carowin, I'm re- it's because I'm reading his bleeding names. <laughs> Do you think, Carowin, is it now? Is it a two horse race? Is it a three horse race for that last spot? I think it's probably a two horse race unless Rob Cross picks up a nightly win and gets the maximum points. Um, but even if he does that, I think he needs results to go um, in his favour as well. It, it, it. It almost feels like Aspinall gets one semi-final and it's too much of a gap to cross. But, um, yeah, I, I, think, I think, yeah, I don't know. I, th- I think because we've had two players this year who have majorly struggled, um, it's, it probably does make it a bit more interesting now in the, in, the, in the final few weeks. And the fact that Littler and Humphreys have basically ran away with it. I know MVG's just behind them, but it sort of d- does feel... The different sort of feel to it because of the form of price and right, really. I tend to agree, only I'd put an extra rider in. I fully agree that I think Rob Cross needs a, night, a nightly win. I just think that nightly win has to come next week. I think if he doesn't pick the nightly win up next week and then give himself Rob Cross is a battler and a fighter, and and I think if he put if he picks up that night win next week and he gets himself up to that 17 point, you know, that 16, 17 point mark, and he's and he's within a point or two, then over the course of those last few events, he can fight out those one point, two point, you know, and, and, and that becomes a battle. I think if he doesn't pick that nightly win up next week and everyone picks up points, it 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 then just becomes, oh well, now he needs two night wins, and then it beca- and, and it just gets a bit it could slip away from him. Um, but that transitions us nicely over the North Sea to the Ahoy in Rotterdam next week. Um, we'll have a little, what we'll, we'll do, feel free, those watching in the chat room, as we talk through them, please 
feel free to add your predictions uh, next week for next week's matches as we talk through them. I'll stick them on the screen. Um, we'll, I'll be back again next week, so I will ridicule you along with myself for being wildly, wildly inaccurate. But we open, and again, if you are Michael Smith and you are one point off the playoff places, you don't want your opening match against Luke Littler, do you? But opening match next week, and I will come to you, Carolyn, for predictions is Luke Littler against Michael Smith. Where would you like to go with this one? Um, I'd like to say that Michael Smith um, gets the win, but I don't know, as in, I think Luke Littler, bar, bar the final tonight, he just he just looks too good. And I think, I think he generally just wants to take as many points as he can and sort of romp away with a with a with a league title after 16 weeks. So I, th- I think I'm going to go a, a close game. Um but a, a 6-4 little win, I think. I am finding it difficult to not agree with you in terms of the overall result. I am going to be slightly harsher than you and I'm going to give Michael Smith one leg less and I'm going to go with a Littler 6-3 victory. Jeff's gone for the nuke as well. He's not been brave enough to commit to a scoreline, but he's gone with a Luke Littler win. I think this is an important game, this second one. And, and we, we've spoken, I think, for both players about why why this game could be, could be important. But Rob Cross against Gerwin Price. Well, there's only a point between them in the table. So Gerwin Price probably thinks... If he gets that night win, he's still in a shout, got a shout for um, the playoffs. But um, oh, is Price's heart going to be in it or is he going to say, I, I, it's not happening this year? Um, I hate going against the Welshman, but I'm going I'm to go 6 3 cross. Sorry, well, Wales. Well, I'll bail you out because. I just think that there is Gerwin Price has got is too good. He's too good to to go through a an entire Premier League sort of with a complete whimper, like and and, and really lacklustre at, at, at the bottom. Um, and I and I just think that there's a there's a if not a run a night run, there's a performance in him. And, I, and it's got to it's got to come soon if, if it happens. Um, I'll go. I mean, it's going to go to the wire if it happens. So I'll go. Gerwin Price six five, um, but I think the Welshman gets it done. Jeff agrees with with me. Imagine being the only person not to pick the Welshman. Can I? Mean, how have you yeah. managed that? <laughs> well, I picked. I picked him to win the night tonight, and look how that went. So I've decided <laughs> if I don't pick him from now on, he's got a chance. You've had your fingers burned too many times. Either that or you've created him, haven't you? Um, interesting one next, because, again, one of these players is right in that battle for for that for that spot in a playoff night. But Peter Wright against Nathan Aspinall, what are we thinking here? Um, I just think Peter Wright, at the moment, is turning up to these Premier League nights going through the motions because he signed up, he gets paid, and and that's it. But I, I just think the Aspinall wants it more. He seems to have that little skip in him, that little, um, what did he call himself? The chav from Stockport. He's got that bit of attitude <laughs> back in him. And, yeah, I, I think he'll get the job done. And Wright will put up a fight, but won't have enough. Aspinall 6-4. Well... This is working well tonight because it's quite it's always good to have a bit of a, a disagreement. But I, again, for the same reasons that I picked Gerwin Price, I am going to go. We, we I'm going to go, and I almost think I'm. I, I think I'm a daft picking this at the minute. But <laughs> what? Go for it. He's just got a big average in him. Like if he picks up the right set of darts, he's got. 
he's got a big average in him. And when I look, and I'm li- like looking back over the last few weeks, even when Aspinall's come through the first round, and I look at the averages that he's thrown, we've had like a 94 and a 93, and a, and a 98 and a 95. And, and, I, and I, if you throw 98, 99 at Nathan Aspinall in the Premier League this year, you beat him. And he's he's remarkable. He's done very well to get where he's done the turn. Yes, he's got through, and he and he's he's had some big performances on 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 nights. But I just think he's beatable. He's get you can get at Nathan this year, um, and I just think Peter Wright's due. So I'm going to go with a Peter Wright six four. Jeff is like my spirit animal this evening. He's very much on the same page as me for most of my picks. We'll see if we make it a clean sweep. <laughs> Uh, just gone with a six five as well. Everyone else in the chat room, if you if you are subscribing and you can comment, feel free to weigh in with your own predictions as well. And the final, and this is interesting. I think probably let's be honest, it is the the feature game. It's going to go on last. It's the pick of the quarterfinals um, at the Ahoy. Michael Van Gerwen in front of a home crowd against the world number one and world champion Luke Humphreys. Carolyn, what do we think of this one? Well, yeah. Um... Any other year, I would straight away, undoubtedly, MVG wins. And I think, despite Humphreys playing as well as he, is, I, th- I actually think MVG is going to go back to back. He's going to win. He's going to win the night at the home. At, at, at home, MVG wins six five with a magic last last leg decider. Possibly takes out the the one seventy. That's what I like to win it. Well, I, I, you can come more often because I quite like having a complete clean sweep of disagreements on the, on the predictions. I just think it makes for much more entertaining. One of us is going to look a complete clown next week, and that's fine. I'm all right with that. Um, but I, I again, I just think the levels that we're seeing from from um, Michael Van Gerwen at the moment are nowhere near the levels that we are consistently seeing from Luke Humphreys. Um, I know that tonight he had a bit of an average night. He was average against Luke Humphreys and he was average against, sorry, he was average against Peter Wright and he was average against Luke Littler. What, what recency, sort of what recent experience tells me is that that means he'll turn up next week and, and bang in 104, 105 averages for the evening. Um, Because I just think he's too good and too consistent to turn up an average 90 twice again next week. I just don't think he's got it in his game at the minute to do that. So I I think he'll, I think he'll blow him away. I think it'll be a, I think it'll probably be a 6-3 Luke Humphreys with a, with a ton plus average. I think it'll be a, a, a big, a big performance. Um, Jeff, just to make it a clean sweep as well. Jeff is fully on board. He's gone with a, a six for win as well before we come to pick of the night winners please don't forget everybody that you can go to our title sponsors both for the 2024 premier league of darts bet mgm and kindly our sponsors on the fallout bar this evening bet mgm do offer a double your odds offer every thursday night the premier league is on you can have a little bet on the darts and whatever your odds are, they will double them for you. So if you put a little lacquer together and it's three to one, you will get six to one. Please do, however, remember to gamble responsibly, be gamble aware.org. And with that little bit of business out of the way, all I'm going to ask you for, Carolyn, and anyone in the chat room that would be willing to, is to select for us a I suppose you've already done it to a degree, but I'm going to make you pick the the opposer, the opposing uh, victim of, of of your eventual winner, um, finalists, and a winner, please for me. Uh, the the boy wins at home. MVG is crowned champion, and I think it'll be a repeat of tonight's final. So Ooh, MVG beats Steve Littler. Well, I am going to. S- I'm going to go completely rogue here. This is going to be a right, a, ro- a right rogue pick, and I am going to say that Luke Humphreys beats Gerwin Price 
in the final. Um, I I've picked Price to put a performance in against Cross. Both Smith and Littler, like we've seen, we see, and, 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 and Littler's up and down. He's not. He's had a, like a couple of rough matches. Um, but I think that what Price needs is a a, a win, like th- when he's up against it, and a performance. I think if he comes out and puts a performance in, and make the final. But I do think Humphreys over the course of an evening will will come and have too much. Jeff managed to pick the same final as me, but we finally disagree on something. First time in the evening, Jeff has gone with Price beating Humphreys 6-4. Um, magic stuff. We are, we are pedalling towards the end. What have we got? One, two, three, four, five nights left before... We get to the finals night of the O2 in London on the 23rd of May. That means we've only got six more fallout bars to do this year. I will be back next Thursday. I'm not sure who I will be with, but you will see me back here in the same place. To those of you who are listening on the podcast and catch up audio uh, or, or via audio on the next few days. Apologies that you can't see all of the impressive visuals that I am not technically <laughs> gifted enough. They're probably getting a far better experience, to be completely honest, because I haven't got quite the ability as some of the others. I'm still learning. Um, Carolyn, thank you very much for your company this evening. It's been great to have you on board again. And everybody else, thank you very much indeed for tuning in and your comments in the chat room thank you all very much and i will see you oh well, no i won't see you next week i will see you on monday for the live lounge then i'll see you for the fallout bar next thursday good night everybody